Hey guys and gals, it's Mr. Forgione, uh, back with another YouTube video. Today we're going to start uh, just kind of intro into exchange rates. I'll be honest, I had planned on doing a longer video here, um, but as you can probably see off to the side, we've got uh, some Fords over here. I don't have my projector yet. Um, so I apologize. I, I know you may have seen those in some other videos as well. I thought maybe we have that at, at, uh, at this point so I could kind of go through some of the reasons via PowerPoint uh, with you guys, but I don't have that right now. So I'm going to break it up into two videos to make it hopefully a little bit easier on you guys. Um, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll just kind of intro it today. We'll talk a little bit about the basics of exchange rates today, and, and maybe that'll be better anyway. Because uh, exchange rates, honestly, not the most fun thing in the world. They're not awful or anything, but they're eh, just nothing that, you know, I haven't had any students that have been like, man, you know, when I when I come in here and you're talking exchange rates, I just get, it gets me really jazzed up. Um, I've never really had that happen too much. So, all right, when we're talking about exchange rates, essentially what we're mentioning here is between two nations' currencies. Uh, if you were to pursue economics at a college level and specifically it, if you got into junior senior year of college or grad school or whatever it might be uh, they're probably at that point going to throw multiple currencies in at that point you might have three or four different currencies that you're comparing at a time for this class and, and you know for Cambridge in general we're only going to look at two currencies at a time so as an example uh, let's say we're looking at the the US dollar and the Japanese yen, okay? So that's always the, the first thing that you have to understand is which two currencies you're comparing. The second thing, and this is what trips people up probably the most frequently uh, on this, is when you're looking at an exchange rate, okay? If it takes more of one currency to equal the other currency, then that means that other currency is getting stronger. And let me show you what I mean by this, okay? Let's say that we have a situation where $1 is equal to 2 Japanese yen, okay? $1 equals 2 yen. Which currency is stronger at this point? We say, okay, probably the U.S. dollar, because one of ours equals two of theirs, okay? One, then that means our, our dollar is probably relatively stronger. Now, that's not usually the focus of exchange rates, though. What we normally focus on is, okay, something changed in one of the two economies, okay? And with that change, the exchange rate changed as well. So let's say now something changed, and instead of it being $1 for 2 yen, let's say that now it's $1 for 3 yen. Now, which currency got stronger? Is it the U.S. dollar that got stronger or the Japanese yen that got stronger? The U.S. dollar that got stronger, right? Because it now takes even more Japanese yen to equal that one uh, U.S. dollar. So a couple of different ways you can, you can think about it if you get confused is uh, thinking about people you know, putting out a fire. The more people it takes to put out a fire, the stronger that fire is. Uh, or the number of people it takes to uh, carry something, the, the more people it takes, the heavier that item is. I'm a sports guy, so I always think about, um, you know, from a, a football perspective, if I am, uh, let's say I've, I've called uh, some type of bracket coverage or double coverage on a particular receiver where I'm committing two or in some cases even three guys to that particular receiver, probably means that receiver's pretty good. Okay, probably means that that receiver is uh, a really good player and is stronger than a lot of uh, the players on my team. And so the stronger that player is, the more uh, players I commit from my team into coverage against them. So that's sort of the basic thing that you need to understand with this. Okay, the next thing that, that we've kind of got to grasp is the way that we situate the curves. So let's say... For starts, we always got to pick one of the two currencies. Even though we're comparing it to the other, we've always got to pick one of the two. So just for the sake of argument, let's say we're talking about the dollar just because we're all used to that. That makes it easier for us to understand. So I'm going to draw a supply curve of the dollar, okay, and demand for the dollar. Supply of, demand for. The biggest thing on this that people start 
kind of get confused on is the supply. Okay, demand for the dollar we kind of get for the most part. Supply of the dollar, what I want you to do, we kind of talked about this a little bit uh, in a different context earlier in the year with uh, the Federal Reserve and supply, central banks and supply of money. I want you to think of like there's this, this buffet table that has different currencies on that buffet table, okay? The amount of those currencies, that is the supply, okay? So when we refer to the supply of dollars, we mean if, if you have this table of all these different currencies where people are buying and trading, the supply of dollars is referring to the amount of dollars, the fiscal amount of dollars that are on that particular table at any given time. And hopefully that's going to make more sense uh, as we go through. All right, next thing we always look at is equilibrium, okay? Quantity is pretty straightforward, all right? Quantity is always going to be just the quantity of dollars. Okay, cool, that, that's not anything too difficult. Here's where it gets a little tricky is the price of dollars. Well, how do we measure that? It's the price of dollars. In this case, if we're talking about Japanese yen, it's going to be price of dollars in terms of yen. So as an example, if we started off with, you know, a price of, and hopefully you guys can see this over here, of like 2 yen, that means price of $1 is 2 yen. If we end up at a different price, at a higher price, maybe instead of equilibrium, maybe somewhere up here, now we're at a price of 3 yen in terms of $1. Okay, so this is always the price of dollars in terms of yen. Now, the question always becomes, which one of these two curves do we focus on? Because realistically, whenever we have uh, one of the determinants, and there's really only about four or five different determinants here, um, so it's not as many as what we're, we're used to. But whenever we have one, it could theoretically affect either supply or demand. And so what I always say is just pick one, okay? Just whatever you're, whichever one you're comfortable with, do that and keep it simple and then you can kind of understand how the other one might move as well and, and so uh, let me give you just one real quick example on that we'll call it a day so one of the determinants that we have for uh, exchange rates and for currency and, and you'll see this in the PowerPoint that I'll send out but one of the determinants is just the quality or the popularity of a particular country's goods so I always think about this when, um, when I was 16, when I was a sophomore and junior in high school, uh, I worked at the uh, Sarasota Square Mall. There was a surf shop there called Second Wave. Uh, back then the surfer thing was pretty big and I had long hair. I actually had hair about down to here, shaved up underneath, ponytail, blonde streak running through it. I looked like a skunk. Uh, so that, that was sort of the, my, my style back then. Uh, can tell the you know my wife was was probably swooning back then uh, over that so anyway at second wave we would occasionally get these uh, British customers would come in because for whatever reason there was this this fad or this trend that anything American and specifically American surf companies were hugely popular in Great Britain at that point so they would come and just buy all of these Roxy shirts and Billabong and Quicksilver and all of these types of shirts and hats and all of that stuff. Um, and, and then they would say, okay, well, we'd ask, why are you buying so much? I mean, they, they'd spend $1,000 on this stuff. This is $1,000 in 1996 dollars, okay? So that's equivalent to probably, you know, $2,200, $2,500 today, something like that. Why are you spending all this stuff? Oh, well, we can go back overseas. We can go back to Great Britain and we can sell this for a lot more money. Uh, and we can, you know, double our money or make 100% profit or whatever it might be. This is also before uh, eBay or Amazon or any of that. This was back in, it, there was internet, but it was dial-up. Ask your parents what dial-up is. All right, so let's say in this case that Japanese goods become really, really popular, okay? We are, are just all in on Japanese goods, on anime, on whatever it is. We need to get our hands on some Japanese goods cars, whatever it might be. So, in order for us to get those items, okay, in Japan, the currency is the yen. 
So what that means is we're going to have to trade, okay? We're going to have to trade our dollars to get the yen. So what that means is the supply, if we're focusing on supply, the supply of dollars that is on this theoretical exchange, this buffet table, the supply of dollars in that case would increase because what I am doing is I am taking my wallet out and I am taking my 20 here and I am exchanging that. I am putting that on the table and taking the yen off the table. Okay, so the supply of dollars on that table just went up because I want yen to purchase these Japanese products. So that would be a supply increase. By comparison, we could also argue that if we want Japanese goods, that that is taking the place of American goods. And so that would be a demand decrease for the dollar, that people are not wanting as much of our goods, so they don't need as many dollars because they're trying to get Japanese products, they want the yen instead. Regardless of which one of those two scenarios you go with, whether you go supply, whether you go demand, the effect is going to be the same. If your supply increases, okay, and actually I'll, I'll change up the color here. If your supply increases, what is that going to do to the price or the value of the dollar? It's going to go down. Your value would go down. Well, by comparison, if we were to decrease the demand for the dollar, okay, if we drew a, a demand curve, and, and I'll show it here just so you guys can kind of see, if, if your demand went down, it's the same sort of thing, okay? If you went, started from here and now went down to here, same thing. The price or the value of the dollar went down. So regardless of which curve you move here, the effect is the same. It's a depreciation in terms of the dollar. Our dollar has now been devalued and has depreciated in comparison to the Japanese yen. So I'm going to leave off right there. We're going to do another video later in the week that's going to kind of get more in-depth and talk about the different determinants. If this didn't make sense, if you kind of go, ah, uh, nope, not picking that up, definitely either email me, drop me a line in the comments, and please let me know specifically what about this doesn't make sense because it can be kind of difficult uh, to grasp. I, I totally understand this is a, a foreign concept, uh, no pun intended. So if you have questions, if you have issues, please let me know and let me know how I can help. Hope to see you all soon, and, uh, and we'll, we'll take it from there.